Hello everyone, welcome to an extraordinary journey through the life and legacy of an incredible individual who has left an indelible mark on history. Today, we invite you to join us as we delve deep into the captivating story of Sarah Vaughan, a remarkable figure whose life's journey is nothing short of inspiring. But before we embark on this incredible journey, we kindly ask for your support. If you're as excited as we are to uncover the incredible chapters of Sarah Vaughn's life, please take a moment to like this video, share it with your friends, and hit that subscribe button. Sarah Lois Vaughn, known to the world as the Divine One, was born on March 27, 1924 in Newark, New Jersey. She would go on to become one of the most influential and celebrated jazz vocalists of all time. Her life story is a testament to talent, perseverance, and the indomitable spirit of a woman who conquered the world of music. Sarah Vaughn's childhood was marked by music from the very beginning. Raised in a musically inclined family, Vaughn began piano lessons at the age of seven, sang in the church choir, and played piano for rehearsals and services. She developed an early love for popular music on records and the radio. In the 1930s, she frequently saw local touring bands in her hometown. By her mid-teens, she began venturing illegally into Newark's nightclubs and performing as a pianist and singer. Her innate talent was evident, and she began performing on local radio shows. Her nocturnal adventures as a performer began to overwhelm her. She eventually decided to drop out of high school and concentrate on music. In 1942, at the age of 18, Sarah entered the famed Apollo Theater's Amateur Night Competition. She shocked the audience with her rendition of Body and Soul, showcasing her remarkable vocal range and control. The applause was thunderous, and she won the contest. The prize, as Vaughn recalled, was $10, and the promise of a week's engagement at the Apollo. On November 20, 1942, she returned to the Apollo to open for Ella Fitzgerald. This life-changing moment propelled her into the spotlight, catching the attention of band leaders and record labels. During her week of performances at the Apollo, Vaughn was introduced to band leader and pianist Earl Hines, who hired her on the spot. Vaughn's career took off when she joined the Earl Hines Big Band in 1943. It was with Hines that she honed her skills and developed her distinctive vocal style. Vaughn began her solo career in 1945 and recorded her first hit, Lover Man, with a quintet featuring Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker. The song quickly catapulted her to fame. Her sultry, emotive delivery, and the way she seamlessly incorporated bebop elements into her singing captured the essence of the evolving jazz scene. As the years passed, she continued to release a series of successful recordings, cementing her status as one of the premier vocalists in the genre. After recording the song Time and Again in 1945, Vaughn was offered a record contract and began singing in major night spots in New York. Vaughn became friends with trumpeter George Treadwell, who became her manager. She delegated to him most of the musical director responsibilities for her recording sessions, allowing her to concentrate on singing. With Vaughn and Treadwell's professional relationship on solid footing, the couple married on September 16, 1946. Vaughn's recording success continued through 1947 and 1948. Her recording of Tenderly became an unexpected pop hit in late 1947. Its magic, from the Doris Day film Romance on the High Seas, found chart success in early 1948. Her recording of Nature Boy became a hit around the time the popular Nat King Cole version was released. Recording and critical success led to performing opportunities, with Vaughn singing to large crowds in clubs around the country during the late 1940s and early 1950s. A Chicago disc jockey after hearing her coined a nickname for her, the Divine One, that would follow her throughout her career. In the latter half of the 1950s, she followed a schedule of almost non-stop touring. She was featured at the first Newport Jazz Festival in the summer of 1954, and starred in subsequent editions of that festival at Newport and in New York City for the remainder of her life. In the fall of 1954, she performed at Carnegie Hall with the Count Basie Orchestra on a bill that also included Billie Holiday, 
and Charlie Parker. Although the professional relationship between Vaughn and Treadwell was quite successful through the 1950s, their personal relationship finally reached a breaking point, and she filed for a divorce in 1958. Vaughn had entirely delegated financial matters to Treadwell, and despite significant income figures reported through the 1950s, at the settlement, Treadwell said that only $16,000 remained. The exit of Treadwell from Vaughn's life was precipitated by the entry of Clyde Atkins, a man of uncertain background, whom she had met in Chicago and married on September 4, 1959. Although Atkins had no experience in artist management or music, Vaughn wished to have a mixed professional and personal relationship like the one she had with Treadwell. She made Atkins her manager, although she was still feeling the sting of the problems she had with Treadwell, and initially kept a closer eye on Atkins. In the 1950s, Vaughn signed with Mercury Records, marking a significant chapter in her career. She collaborated with jazz luminaries such as Count Basie and Quincy Jones, producing a string of critically acclaimed albums. Her versatility was on full display as she effortlessly shifted between jazz, pop, and even opera, showcasing her remarkable vocal prowess. The 1960s brought further recognition and success for Sarah Vaughan. She received a Grammy Award for her album Sarah Vaughan with Michelle Legrand and continued to tour extensively, captivating audiences around the world with her electrifying performances. In 1961, Vaughn and Atkins adopted a daughter, Deborah Lois, known professionally as Paris Vaughn. However, the relationship with Atkins proved difficult and violent. After several incidents, she filed for divorce in November 1963. She turned to two friends to help sort out the financial affairs of the marriage. Club owner John Wells, a childhood acquaintance, and Clyde Golden Jr. discovered that Atkins' gambling and spending had put Vaughn around $150,000 in debt. Her New Jersey house was seized by the IRS for non-payment of taxes. Vaughn retained custody of their child, and Golden took Atkins' place as Vaughn's manager and lover for the remainder of the decade. Despite her demanding career, Vaughn was a devoted mother to her daughter. Balancing the responsibilities of motherhood with her music career was a testament to her strength and determination. In 1971, breaking a four-year hiatus, Vaughn signed a contract and returned to the studio. She recorded A Time in My Life, a step away from jazz into pop music, with songs by Bob Dylan, John Lennon, and Marvin Gaye. Send in the Clowns was another attempt to break into the pop music market. Vaughn hated the album cover, depicting a clown with an afro, but she loved the song. Eventually, it became her signature song. In 1988, she contributed vocals to an album of Christmas carols recorded by the Mormon Tabernacle Choir and sold in Hallmark card stores. In 1989, Quincy Jones' album Back on the Block included Vaughn in a brief scatting duet with Ella Fitzgerald. This was her final studio recording. It was her only studio recording with Fitzgerald in a career that had begun 46 years earlier opening for Fitzgerald at the Apollo. In 1989, Vaughn's health began to decline, although she rarely revealed any hints of this in her performances. During a run at New York's Blue Note Jazz Club in 1989, she was diagnosed with lung cancer and was too ill to finish the last day of what would turn out to be her final series of public performances. She had been a heavy smoker. Vaughn returned to her home in California to begin chemotherapy and spent her final months alternating stays in the hospital and at home. She grew weary of the struggle and demanded to be taken home, where at the age of 66, she died on the evening of April 3, 1990 while watching Laker Girls, a television movie featuring her daughter. Her funeral was held at Mount Zion Baptist Church in Newark, New Jersey. Following the ceremony, a horse-drawn carriage transported her body to Glendale Cemetery. Sarah Vaughan's life story is a testament to the power of music to transcend adversity and to the enduring impact of a singular talent. Her voice, with its unparalleled beauty and versatility, will forever echo in the hearts of those who had the privilege of hearing her sing. Sarah Vaughan, the Divine One, will always be remembered as a true legend in the world of jazz.